then I press this button. 60, 59, 58, this is a countdown 57, to the Slade and Mason 56, Show. 55, 54, this continues to be a countdown to the Slade and Mason Show. 50, 49, 48, You're listening to the countdown to the 46, Slade and Mason Show. 45, 44, 43, This is the continued 42, countdown to the Slade and Mason 40, Show. 39. 38 right now 37 you're listening to the countdown 35 the Slade and Mason Mason show 33 please stand by me as you're listening to the countdown to the Slade and Mason show 28 27 this is of course the countdown to the Slade and Mason show 23 22 we continue now with the countdown to the Slade and Mason show 18 17 stand by 16 as we are now delivering the countdown to the Slade and Mason show 12 11. Yes. 10. This is our countdown nine, to the Slade eight, and Mason seven, show. 6. 5. Are, you ready? are we starting four, this? Here we go. 3. We <laughs> must be. Uh, 1. I just. That. <laughs> now broadcasting from the Dan Mason Studios, deep. In the heart of Virginia, it's the Slade and Mason Show. Deep. Deep. Deeper. 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 Deep. <laughs> Hi, I'm J.D. Slade. I'm Dan Mason. And this, this is the Slade and Mason, Mason Show. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the Slade and Mason Show. It's all about you and us. It's like a radio program where we share with you news stories and things that we see throughout the week. Or, in my case, uh, this morning. Um, it's our take <laughs> on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh basically we see things say things we see things we see things and say things we say things and see things that you are thinking but you would never hear on the radio have, uh, it's, it's say. yeah we just never say uh you never hear it on the radio we're just having fun don't take it too seriously just enjoy all the music you hear unless we tell you otherwise is brought to you by daniel music daniel music because we're cheap um hey remind me wait a minute before you get started a good did you uh, say we got popped last week? <laughs> oh, yeah, we did for the, the Puddin' song. <laughs> <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you, I, I do a morning radio show, <clears throat> and I usually talk to Dan once a morning, even though I know I shouldn't, I still do anyhow. So he goes and he says, yeah, we got popped. <laughs> what? <laughs> he said, yeah, we got popped for the Puddin' song. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and and thought that was so obscure that they wouldn't catch him <laughs> i know and I'm, all right so just so you guys know um so i'm getting a lot of this music from <clears throat> a music archive and now it's for historical purposes they save this stuff but i go ahead and i steal the music because i figure look it's almost 100 years old no one's alive anymore i'm just gonna borrow the music turns out some of these people's <laughs> relatives are still around. And when I post it up to fa uh, to YouTube, I get this little notification. Uh, we just wanted to let you know, um, yeah, the Putin song you placed, uh, that's claimed by the XYZ company. And um, uh, we have to share the credits with them. And so you can keep it up there. We just, we just need to let you know we're going to be sharing the credits with them. Now, which is interesting because we haven't gotten a dime. <laughs> out of youtube so you know well i i gotta tell you i mm. i can't remember the last time i heard the Putin song <laughs> <laughs> or uh, uh, <clears throat> uh what was the one you played before for that chicken and something oh <laughs> uh, the chicken song i'll tell you it's funny it these are really obscure songs i thought like <laughs> who'd know but yeah apparently uh <laughs> youtube has a library of these all important historical songs. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, let me continue. Let me continue. All right. So, uh, again, all the other music, like our intro and exit and things like that, that's all brought to you by Daniel Music. He's a pretty clever guy. Um, <clears throat> remember, we're on the Instagram page, thesladenmasonshow.com. 
yeah, go ahead and take a look at that 2016 picture I put up there. Um, let see. Tell your friends, neighbors, cops, uh, people on the street. Don't be afraid to tell people that you listen to the Slade and Mason show because by doing that, it keeps us going and going and going like Energizer bunnies, but prettier. Hey, oh, and man. yeah, man. yeah, you know, what? don't lie to them. Uh, you know, the thing of it is that even if nobody's listening, <laughs> we're going to do this. <laughs> <'cause we enjoy laughs> <it. laughs> well, that and that, <clears throat> that and a Lamborghini, but the, uh, oh, that's right. <laughs> Don't forget, we got to sell a Lamborghini. Um, and this is uh, brought to you in part by Icy Something Icy. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, I think I've covered everything in the intro. Uh, uh, Mr. Slade, and I yes, tell you that uh, gently, uh, do you have any rants for us today? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> glad, because it helps to fill in the hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on just a moment while I... <clears throat> And in, 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 imbibe in some of my favorite beverage. Uh, I didn't know you could stew that stuff. Oh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> caramel macchiato, be careful. All right. Carmine who, what? <laughs> a Carmen, a Carmen, <laughs> see now, you, a caramel macchiato, stop it. <laughs> and see again, it's like, all right. Do you know what Wednesday was? Yes, it was Wednesday. Yeah, but do you know what designation it had? Eh, eh. You probably don't because you uh, you work for a faceless corporation. So, you know, again, yeah. it's like you've got many, many bosses who you never even see. Mm -hmm. I work in a, a simple, simple place where I get to see my boss every day. Oh, nice. Uh, so Wednesday... <clears throat> Was that, National Bosses Day? Oh yes, yeah, sure was. Yes. Um, so uh, it's interesting you mentioned that because, uh, well, can I finish my yeah. story? Um, <laughs> sure. Uh, I'll just write myself a note here. Yes, please do. Note: Wednesday was Bosses Day. All right, go ahead. Sorry, I was interrupting you. Go ahead. What got to me was that, um. I've had some very, very good bosses. Mm -hmm. And I've had some, yeah, those guys. Not so good bosses. Not so good bosses, okay. But the fact <clears throat> that, is this another Hallmark moment? Is this another one so we can go, go to the store and buy some cards that say things like, Happy Bosses Day. Or you are the boss of my heart. Uh, see, I, I, I don't like the term boss. First off, because it just has a connotation that there's a mob influence there. <laughs> you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. Careful, we're gonna get nagged again. <laughs> not, what, not the way I play. <laughs> uh, but there are, they actually have a, a list of statistics, and I wanted to share some of them with you because when I saw these early in the week, I thought, hmm, okay, 12% of employees, <laughs> you ready, say that their boss causes most of the stress and tension. <laughs> <laughs> Only 12, okay. Really? All right, 10% mm -hmm. have dreamed about telling their boss off. Oh, I'm betting the number is much higher. Bada, bada. I am betting the number is much, much higher. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see here. You know, I I made it a rule years ago that I don't do the company Christmas party. And I think I explained this in an earlier program. Mm -hmm. Because when you have the company Christmas party, normally there is going to be alcohol served. And sometimes there are some people who just probably should not drink um, because they lose control, not of their bowels or, or of their, their bladder, but they lose control of their tongue. Well, wait, 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 before you go on, <clears throat> let me ask you a question. If, if, if uh, policies changed and they didn't give out alcohol anymore, they gave out car parts. Would you, would you show up? 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> priorities, ladies and gentlemen. Priorities. That's exactly right. <laughs> so, um, back in the seventies, I was a young married man. You know, when I was still dumb enough to believe, oh yeah, this is going to be forever. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. Well, anyway, so I, I started working at this radio station um, back in September. Mm -hmm. Now, I should have known when I got hired, the general manager was on vacation huh. when I got hired. Huh. I had heard stories through the grapevine about this guy, but hey, like I said, they had stroked my ego enough to make me sign on with them. Anyway, it's the Christmas party, company Christmas party. I walk into this building. There's this table that is as long as any table you'll ever see. And my boss is at the far end of this table. And at the time, I wasn't J.D. Slade yet. So he yells at the top of his lung, Hey, blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry, I don't have any possum power chitlins. Uh, now, 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 <clears throat> now, remember, I'm in my 20s now. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not giving a rat's behind me about uh, the future and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, you know, I'm going to punch this guy in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Did you oblige my it? Wife, my wife pulled on my arm and pleaded with me to not get involved in that because, number one, it's December and it's cold outside. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but now to make a long story short, 10 months later, I got the opportunity and tried to take advantage of it. And I scared this guy so badly that it's like he walked around the around the block to get to his car to get away from me. Uh, what were you? Obli oh, obliging, uh, making a bloody nose. Oh yeah, happen. no, no, oh no, I was going to do much more than a bloody nose. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was going to go to jail for many, many years. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So anyway, this 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 boss. Yeah. See a nice thing. There it goes. That calms. Music soothes the savage breasts. Okay. <laughs> I got to hey, delete hey, this whole show. Go ahead. Keep going. Do you know, do you know that is the proper saying? That is the actual thing. It's not music soothes the savage beast. It is music soothes the savage breast. Yeah. Okay. You didn't know that, did you? See, again, see, this is also an educational program. All right. So <laughs> um, the Christmas party, 24% of people regret criticizing a boss or colleague at an office Christmas party. Again. The reason that I don't, because, like I said, alcohol makes people just, just come out of their mouth any way they want to. And then the next day, it's like, oh, man, I, I was so drunk. Yeah. But I learned years ago, mm -hmm. if you're drunk enough to say it, you are drunk enough to mean it. And so, so I avoid that. That way, nobody, I don't have to go to jail at Christmas for going to the Christmas party. Uh, you know, again... How stupid are you to go ahead and send a rude or a risque picture or joke to the boss? Me? Not. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, I learned a long, 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 long time ago, back when I was a Ute. Uh, you yeah. Don't, you don't do that type of stuff, man. You don't, you just, you smile, you take the, you know, uh, yeah, the salad. Thank you. Yeah. And if you cannot do that, then it's time for you to leave the company. Now, these are lessons that I've learned as I've gotten older. Mm -hmm. So I'm passing this along before you think about, like, grabbing your boss in an alley and just, just giving him the what for. The yeah. other side of the coin is do yourself a favor. Don't fall in love with the boss. I mean, you know, that is just a disaster waiting to happen. Oh, yeah. You know, again, and having a crush on the boss is the same thing. Listen, don't <laughs> avoid that at all costs. It's like, and if you can't, then get another job tomorrow. Because if you don't, 
you will eventually be looking for another job. Especially in your case, because I don't think he's your type. Anyway, uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> I might be his, but... <laughs> Stop it. Uh, Stop you started. It. You started. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about my rant a little bit here. <clears throat> sure. Go right ahead, man. Uh, so there are these interesting questions coming up from uh, the U.S. Census. I don't know if you heard about this at all. Oh, yes. Yeah. So and we know where a lot of these questions are coming from. Uh, yeah. So uh, so we couldn't do anything about citizenship. So now the U.S. Census has been directed to acquire the following. Obviously, name. Got it. Yep. Address. Okay, that makes sense. Birth date. Yep, got to keep track of that there. Sex. Are they talking how often? Oh, oh whether I've been sexual. <laughs> okay. um, hmm. Now we're getting into, and this is coming from, they want the... Uh, Division Motor Vehicles to be providing this information. Uh, race and eye color. Hmm. Eye color. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm not going to be able to fool people into thinking I got blue eyes anymore, am I? Didn't didn't we uh, start wearing uh, shades, man? Didn't we have <laughs> didn't we have a problem with this like uh, during the 1940s? Yeah, didn't, wasn't it, wasn't that like a little problem there? Where were we like? Really yeah, obsessed something about, about... Uh, something about master, and this time it wasn't black people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have to ask the question, and I I already know the answer. It's really a ruse to to kind of filtrate those who are brown eyed and and not. <laughs> Not orange skinned uh, <laughs> and blue eyed. Oh. Yeah, yeah. We, you're really good people. Really, really great, great, if fantastic you have people. Hair, that's a plus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, it looks like Mitch McConnell has finally uh, said, "Yeah, I think we ought to go ahead with this." I saw that this morning. That's that's step in the right direction. I think maybe. You know. Um. Well, here's the thing. Mm. And I'm not going to get deep into this. No, we won't get too deep because but, that's not what this is all about. But Mitch McConnell smells the farts before they hit the air when Donald Trump's in the room. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. how far his nose is stuck. Yeah. So I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it until it comes to the Senate. Okay. Now, and with that said, that's enough about that. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you know what? Here is the thing. You, when you have a boss, you, you want to think that your boss knows a little bit more than you do about what you do and about what your company's about. Not so. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be farther than from the truth. Yeah. All right. I think that's the same with any business, really. Now, a, a survey by Office Team reveals that 80% of employees are happy with their boss. Let me just take a little sample here. <laughs> I, I guess they close. weren't. I guess they weren't uh, checking you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even close. Not All even right? close. Twenty percent of people dislike their boss. Mm. <laughs> Fifty-one percent of people say their manager is a poor leader. Mm -hmm. Now, thirty-four percent of people say their boss is a friend. Mm -hmm. This is where we go wrong. This yeah. is where we go wrong. <laughs> Don't want to be lost a friend because that's going to cause a problem down the line. Yes. One, if I'm ever going for his job, we're going to become enemies real quick. Or what and if you two, have to let the kid go? Yeah. So there we go. Uh, listen to this. 23% <laughs> of people say their boss is a micromanager. I have known them. They are a real, real trifling pain. Uh, sixty percent of the people say their boss is. Are you ready for this word? Yep. Incompetent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. You ready? So hard to relate. Go ahead. <laughs> Cities with the best bosses: <clears throat> Salt Lake City, Chicago, 
Los Angeles, and Miami. Wow. Let's see here. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Mormons, murder capital, drug capital, and Mexican capital. All right. Mexicans <laughs> and Jewish capital. There we are. And the cities with the worst bosses. Are you ready? Boston, <laughs> Boston. Phoenix, Washington, Cincinnati, Detroit, or I, 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 I <laughs> Nebraska. <laughs> the whole state. <laughs> oh, my. You know, so. What was the last one? Then, uh, oh, uh, Detroit. Detroit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, look at this cluster of cities, man. <laughs> I mean, Boston, Washington, mm -hmm. Detroit, all toilets of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> So you figure the bosses enjoy working there, and not so much. That would explain a lot. So that's exactly right. So again, <laughs> so now let's see here. We just uh, we just alienated Boston, Washington, and Detroit. Ah, uh, we still so got. They're not going to advertise with us. It's all right. Hundreds of cities. So. It's all right. It's all good. It's all good. The worst person that I know that works for a company. You know what their status is. Uh, I don't know what Jane Fonda is doing. What? <laughs> yeah, they got it. They have a distinct status. Who that be? We call them BNs. What are they called? BNs. Brown nosers. Oh, okay. So, people who flatter their boss are more likely to be unkind to coworkers. It's because they're kissing the boss's butt. Mm. Office suck ups are more likely to skip meetings. Or browse the web instead of working because they're suck ups. <sighs> They've also depleted energy levels and waste more time in the office than others. Wow i I just <laughs> thought about I just thought about who that is. <laughs> <laughs> not a word. Uh, not a word. <laughs> Sucking up to the boss is one of many behaviors employees use to maintain their desired image. Yeah. <laughs> see again that's that's see there again that's why i just figured out why i have such a hard time because i just refuse to do that <laughs> i'm too old to be doing that stuff and it's like i'll tell you what if you're waiting for me to suck up man you are gonna wait a long time that's why you're not the vice president and corporate general office manager of the department of high <laughs> You're always going to be that. Just a lowly <laughs> little jock. That's right. No, it's like, I, like, I like the other name that I have. What the I other name that I have is Troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Tell everybody what JD really stands for. Uh, uh, do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> it's your it's your motto. It's your thing. It's your It's your trademark. It's what you are. It stands for juvenile delinquent. That's right. <laughs> He's a juvenile delinquent, everybody. That's where he got that from. Yeah. And you didn't think nothing. it was you didn't I, think it was just dandy, did you? <laughs> uh, uh, no, it does stand for juvenile delinquent. That's so. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it it fits you so well. Yeah, I know. It's like, you know, again, and I got to thank Tom Bigby. Uh, you know, again, I think he's probably still down in Dallas mm -hmm. for helping me get that. It's, it's, it's something that has stuck with me for all my life. <laughs> hey, let me ask you a question. Um, how far? Oh, yes, sir. You in the plaid shirt and then you in the cowboy hat next. I'm actually wearing the plaid shirt because, well, anyway, the, uh, so <laughs> Christiansburg, Christiansburg, Virginia, you know where that is? Yes. Okay. They just received, um, they are now a test area for Wing. Are you aware of this product? For what? Wing. Wing, 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 wing. Wing. W-I-N-G? Wing. Yes, Wing. Do you know what this is? No, I don't. All right. Um, it is a new service by Google. Does that help? Oh, right, God. Maybe not. Bob. Does it involve drones? It does. <laughs> Go. Sure as donuts. Um, <clears throat> one of the first deliveries was this weekend, and it was a uh, family ordered um, and Tylenol. <laughs> uh, cough drops. 
<laughs> Vitamin C's, <laughs> tissues, and this one, I don't know, bottled water. Now, the way it works is the drone is uh, 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 released from its hub area where they package up whatever you need, and then it flies. It's got a six-mile range for, for, the, for the region. And uh, it's it's filled by Walgreens. And once it gets to your home, instead of coming down and landing, it actually <laughs> drops, it, <laughs> it <laughs> drops it down like Santa Claus. No, yeah, it drops it down on a long cable and then releases it and then goes off into the, the netherworld. Now, a couple of things come to mind. First off, I don't know if I'm I'm keen on the idea of drones because you know how do I know that that's like a, a happy drone making a delivery or maybe a small nuclear bomb that's one or two just decided you don't like you <laughs> yes 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 so and then um, first the other thing I have a problem with is you know so much for HIPAA okay Walgreens sharing this information about his family. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> the other concern I have is we need to help. I mean, first, I think it's it's terrific. It's great. New modern technology. We're all enjoying it. It's great. I'm a happy camper. But why is it that Christiansburg doesn't seem to have indoor plumbing? I mean, <laughs> why do you have to get bottled water? When did, wouldn't it behoove Google to maybe say, let's get some water over there because this family ordered bottled water. Apparently, there is no water. So I think it's a bigger problem, and I think we need to address it. And, uh, yeah, that was a little bit frightening. Uh, so, so now, if it's available at Walgreens, I want to see how they do alcohol delivery. Yeah, baby. They drop that sucker down. You got to like insert your driver's license to get the thing to open up oh, or something. Dan, 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 you know, you, you, you've touched on a nerve because I'm telling you, I am in great fear and loathing of this technology. You got a shotgun I, handy? Hey, like I said now, and that's the other thing. I guarantee you it's going to end up becoming a federal offense to shoot a drone down. Yep, it's coming. It is coming, and so you know. Again, and all these, we got enough junk up in the sky that the United <laughs> States is responsible for. Now we're going to add just a little bit more junk. We got Boeing the, airplanes that can't stay up in the air. I'll tell you. I'll tell exactly. you. So now we're going to we're going to depend on Walgreens to <laughs> to get us an order on a drone. And not not mess it up, not crash into something, not run into wires, no, nothing. Okay, no, it'll be perfect. It'll be perfect. Yeah, like I say, I tell you what. Yeah, I I was a kid, and I just knew that by 1999 we were going to have flying cars with bubble domes, because <laughs> that's what the comic books told me. As I've gotten older, I don't want to see a flying car. <laughs> <laughs> not one i don't want to see one flying car because it's like i see what mankind does on level pavement i can't imagine drunk flyers man yeah. oh and i've seen people drive from florida so that's what <laughs> yeah exactly so oh my god i mean i just can't imagine and and you know the i guess the thing that really got me was when you ever watch old westerns dan yeah. Okay. How do you know where you are? What do you mean? Where are the street signs? How do you know what road you're traveling on? Oh, well, listen. What you <laughs> want to do here is you go to down where Mickey's barn used to be, see? And you, you recognize that's got that old pine tree stump there. And what you want to do is you want to go down about nine looks. And once you get there, you want to turn down. Dead left, dead left, down by by Sally Stream. Now, that's all dried out, but you can you can kind of figure what it was. Sally Stream's there, and and you want to go about nine miles. So um, 
you want to get out there and, and you might want to take some water with you because if it's in Christiansburg, Virginia, they ain't got no water there. And as you're making your way through, you'll see some cows, some north-facing cows. And now now that's exactly where it's going to be. So you you can start digging there. Now, so, okay, so that's <laughs> one person traveling. Now, just imagine you got a wagon trail. You got like 10 wagons with uh, people all in them. And you're leading cows through this. I, I you know, well, here's God the, love them. Here's the God other, love here's them. the other problem. Here's the other problem. Uh, for real, they will say things like it's nine looks down the road. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now for me, I'm a six foot one tall human being. Nine looks is like a mile and a half. If, if you tell the same thing to like a, a dwarf, I mean, he goes down to the end of the block. <laughs> That's nine looks for him. I told you a long time ago, I learned, I learned this, this value of measurement that people have here in the South. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a fat kid, 16 years old. And I had just met some kids in the neighborhood when we just moved down here. Mm -hmm. And so we had a little band together. So we're carrying, you know, a bass drum, snare drum, cymbals, guitars, amps. There's seven or eight of us and we're walking down the road. And I am like, it's like 90 degrees. I'm sweating like, a, you know, a hoozy in church. And I say, how much farther? And then I learned the measure of distance. Just down the road a little ways. <laughs> we'll return to the Slade and Mason show after this. <laughs> we'll be right there. Just down the road a little ways. Today in history, October 20th, 1720, the Caribbean pirate Calico Jack is captured by the Royal Navy, and then he goes on to do several Disney movies. 1803, the United States Senate ratifies the Louisiana Purchase, which is good because they already cashed the check, so. 1944, General Douglas MacArthur fulfills his promise to return to the Philippines when he commands an Allied assault on the island, reclaiming them from the Japanese during the Second World War. A uh, little known fact, uh, instead of saying, I shall return, uh, he was thinking about putting on his dark sunglasses and then saying, I'll be back. And finally, 1973, the Sydney Opera House opens. Uh, it's really big, shaped like petals of a flower, uh, made of concrete, and fortunately all that opera noise is pointing out to the sea. I'm Dan Mason, and that's October 20th. Yeah. Hot girl pizza, I'm Heidi. Here's your hot girl pizza as you ordered. Thanks. Uh, w wait a minute. I ordered pepperoni. Oh, my God, you wouldn't believe it. The last guy's order got this order messed up, too. He got pepperoni pizza, and he ordered cheese. That'll be thirty-two fifty. They're not exactly the brightest penny in the bunch, but God, aren't they lovely. <laughs> Hi, it's me, Heidi, your hot girl pizza girl. You were just here like four minutes ago. Oh my god, you're right. I thought you had a twin brother. How was your pepperoni pizza? You gave it to the other guy, remember? I got the plain cheese. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, bye. Hot girl pizza, it's me, Heidi. Here's your hot girl pizza as you ordered. Oh, shake great. Hey, wait a minute. This looks like the Zornio. I know, right? So, I was going to deliver the pizza, but I got a call from my boyfriend who told me his best friend's girlfriend had car trouble and he had to help him. And then he ran into his old girlfriend, who was from out of town, who he said was a recent guy BD two years ago. Can you believe it? After two years? So, he said he needed to help her move some boxes at her new apartment. My boyfriend is so nice that way, so I promised I was going to get them some pizza from the store. But the store hadn't opened yet, so I gave him yours, and then I stopped to go get you some DiGiorno. Just follow the directions on the box. It'll be thirty-two fifty. Not a bright penny in the bunch of them. But you're gonna love hot girl pizza delivery. Hot girl pizza coming to an area near you. Send a banana to the orange. Roll on, roll on. Send the apple to the orange. Roll on, roll on, they say to the 
tomorrow you will begin round Just to be got tired and put you down Roll on, roll on, roll on Set the orange to the banana Slide on, slide on Set the apple to the orange Slide on, slide on They say to the banana You're a fine, fine fellow But we just can't stand it Cause you watch to mellow Slide on So that was, <laughs> believe it or not, that was Steve Miller. No, not the Steve oh, Miller. Oh. It was Steve <laughs> Steve Miller's Four Barons. The Four Barons doing Mixed Fruit. And that was in commemoration of Brandied Fruit Day. <laughs> and we'll talk about that in just a second. But first off, let's talk about I See Something Icy. I See Something Icy. Shaved Ice Treats by my buddy Sheila Keenan. Now, I know it is 53 degrees outside, and the last thing you want to do is have something cold in your hands. You're right. But the really cool thing is you can also have um, you can have Icy Something Icy for uh, birthday parties, uh, fundraisers. You can have a, uh, like a family party. So a lot of them will do that. They'll They'll have the truck come over. They do the shaved ice. You put your pina colada flavoring on top and then really add your pina colada flavoring. You know what I'm talking about. So uh, available throughout the year. Uh, they're over at uh, www. That's www.icy. So it's I-C-E-Y something. S-O-M-E-T-H-I-N. Leave the G off for goodness. Um, and then icy again. I-C-E-Y dot com. Uh, they're available on Facebook, Instagram, unlike us, because we just had that picture from 2016. And um, uh, Sheila can be reached at 804-617-8827. Again, 804-617-8827. So you don't forget, grab a pen, a piece of paper, pencil, whatever, and write this down. It's eight zero. The zero is the thing of the bomb. So it's 804-617-8827. Again, I see something I see. Yum. E. All right. I have warm in my hand <laughs> so it's a cup of coffee all right so brandied fruit do you know what brandied fruit is brandied fruit brandied fruit cultural uh, differences brandied yep. 
fruit. No, I, I, yep, again, cultural differences. Cultural differences. All right, so my dad's mom, my grandmother, was uh, first or second generation uh, England. And they would have their vanilla ice cream with a scoop of a brandied fruit. And oh, this is fruit that is uh, soaked in brandy. Well, yes and no. So you can create brandied fruit by <clears throat> um, letting it ferment. And you add sugar and then you add the fruit and you keep feeding it back and forth, back and forth. And you mix it up and you take a big scoop out. And when you're done, this this stuff is like, it's like uh, not not too heavy. It's probably about 12, 15% pure alcohol. Fruit, actually fruited alcohol. And it smells something funky. And then well, you put this on top of your ice cream. <clears throat> what? It's rock fruit. It's rotted fruit, but it's fermented fruit. It's rotten fruit. Well, what do you yeah, think wine is? is? Hey, like I say, cultural differences. No, sir. We're not putting no rotten fruit on top of our ice cream. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Have, what do you think? It's rotten fruit. What do you no. think? <laughs> Why do you think they make Bosco? Because <laughs> God loves us. Sprinkles. <laughs> Sprinkles. No, that's so you don't put rotten fruit on your, on your ice cream. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, my gosh. Even, even you and I, uh, cultural differences, I'm sorry. I'm betting that if you tell enough people what they're putting on there, they're not going to want that put on their ice cream either. Okay, so what you do is you take the pineapples and the pears and the peaches and you dice them up into little tiny chunks. And then what you do is you allow rogue yeast to, to come in contact and start this eating is, the fruit. This, this then you this, add this sugar to it, this, and the yeah, sugar pretty, starts eating at the fruit. My people, my people make dandelion wine. It's and like it's, it's like making rotten fruit to put on your ice cream. <laughs> and it's rotting away, and as it rots away, it browns and gets a caramelized look to it as the yeast yeah, goes deeper. Yeah, it also deeper, grows deeper. more fuzz than your chin. Yes. <laughs> And then you mix that in, and oh, oh so delicious! And, uh, and no. as the long chain molecules fly off the edge, you oh, pour God. some onto your ice cream and say, mm. "Hey, you know you have a great voice for a now in a time when the world was ending." <laughs> <laughs> in a world, <laughs> <laughs> destroyed by meteors. Oh, it's fun. It's funny you mention that because I, I received an email from uh, my buddy who wants me to do Steve again. Uh, <laughs> Steve, and I don't know. It's a it's a, a children's <laughs> devotional videos or something like that. So I'll be doing another Steve script <laughs> in about a week and a half, two weeks. That'll be fun. Maybe I'll share that at, at the uh, website. We'll see. Oh, that'll be <clears> fun. So, hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. Whoa. What kind of phone do you have? Uh, it's a flat one. Look. No, I mean, do you have an iPhone? Look. I can't see it. Remember, I'm the guy who took blind kids to the circus. And went, oh, look at that. <laughs> uh, no, it is not an iPhone. It's a, it's a, it's an Android. But I, I heard this weekend. Yeah. Apple did an update and pushed out like a new interface. And people are unhappy. That's a polite way of putting it. Well, now, listen. Okay, so the whole idea was cell phones were these huge, monstrous, rock-like things, and then they became smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh -huh. Well, now we're going to go ahead and start making them go bigger and bigger, and, of course, the price is going up and up and up. Now, the iPhone, is it the iPhone 10 or 11? Yes, it is. Uh, it This <laughs> is like $1,400. At least, yeah. Okay, now, just to show you how Apple is, like, going through both sides of the fence, mm -hmm. Apple may release a smaller and cheaper iPhone next year. Now, the low-cost phone will resemble the iPhone 8 and will start at $400. Wow, that's that's, like, almost free for Apple. Yeah, the new phone could be released as early as spring, and it'll come, oh, it'll come in only two colors gray and red i don't give a rat's hiney <laughs> i just want the phone to work 
I want to be able to make a call and take a call. All that other junk I just don't need. Now I'm starting to sound like Saul Rabinowitz because <laughs> it's complicated bones entirely too much to just make it too hard for you to understand. And who's got little fingers enough to be able to type those little numbers in and letters in? I can't. It's like when I go to push an R, I end up getting three T's. Well, I got to tell you, I stumbled across <clears throat> a, uh, a an advert. Advert. That's a fancy word for advertisement. It was Ooh. an advert for... That's like going in hospital. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> um, going to university. Um, yes, yes. It was a... Um, um, Complete why, rubbish. Why my meter is going all over? Hold on. Check, 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 check. What? Check, 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 check. Boy, you got all loud in there. Ra, 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 ra. There we go. Um, <clears throat> there were these little phones, and I now know how I stumbled across it. It was an actual Android phone. It was about an inch and a half tall wow and about three quarters of an inch wide and it was an actual Put it on your finger actual functional android phone and i'm thinking nope i love the novelty but i ain't spending 50 dollars for that you know what's gonna happen to that thing you're yeah, not gonna but, like uh, go ahead and dig in your pocket for some change and you're gonna end up throwing it in a candy machine <laughs> <laughs> but I got a Snickers bot out of it. Um, so, uh, uh, speaking of, of, of money, uh, uh, <clears throat> how would you like to make $125,000 easy? <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. L- wait, 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 wait. Legally. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh. Uh, okay. I'm not talking now, about going to a Turkish jail or prison or anything like that. Okay, no. now you got my curiosity peaked, and I okay. need to write myself a note, too. So go ahead. <laughs> Where do I get $125,000? <laughs> okay, there is a company called Geomig. Geomig. Sure. So it's G-E-O-M-I. Is it a Q or a G? Anyway, uh, find it both ways. What so they've discovered is they want to start making Androids, people, Android-like you know, robots. But people are definitely creeped out by uh, faces that are on the robots. <laughs> so for $125,000, you give up all copyrights to your face if they choose your face. They want, you know, uh, 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 a kindly looking face, a caring looking face. A face that (laughs) (laughs) so they can put them on hundreds, if not tens of thousands of robots. (laughs) I can't make this up. (laughs) Did you see coming into a town? Like 900 Dan Mason staring back at you. How about 900 J.D. Slater? <laughs> <laughs> aye, 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 aye. Oh, gosh. I'd have to run away. I'd go, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> My hope, my hope is that they'll cycle out some of these. Otherwise, it's going to look like the step for wives or something like that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, like a, whew, like a scene out of Westworld. You know, yeah, like, no lie. Like, his face off. Oh, my gosh. That would be just so funny. <laughs> oh, my. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Uh, From the sublime to the ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> I'm not you kidding. Are, that's By the way, that's for real. That's for real. I, I know. And I, I'm telling uh, you, it's, it's a scary thought. <laughs> <laughs> There's slades everywhere. <laughs> but he seems so friendly. <laughs> because everybody's idea of beauty is different. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, gosh. All right. What do you... I um I, I I made the mistake and I, and I got married once. <laughs> <laughs> I say it was a mistake. Wait, because- disclaimer. Now, marriage is is a great 
great institution for some people. Apparently not, J.D. So this is our disclaimer for that. Go ahead. Go ahead. As I was saying, I made the mistake and I got married once. Uh, And it was because at the time, I was naive enough to believe all the stories that the priest told me. You know, again, that once you make those vows, it's like it's forever and you have to just work through it. But see, they never told you about Sometimes you just want to kill her. (laughs) (laughs) They never tell you that. They say, oh, you'll have struggles. Struggles. And you'll have tough times. But tough times don't last. Tough people do and all that rigmarole. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So I found out three years later that forever is about three years long. (laughs) Now, I, I came out really unscathed. One, because... Well, I didn't have anything. Yeah. You know? So, but so I was thinking about this, and I here again, cultural differences. If you decide that you're going to, you know, go ahead and buy that engagement ring, and you're gonna plan things for your life together. If it falls apart, you can't have the ring back. Yeah, that's true. You can't. No. So here's this poor chump. Now, let me just give you the title, and then it's like you'll understand. Okay, go ahead. Cheating husband sues former mistress for gifts he gave her. Yeah, good. Mm. (laughs) All right, so now this cheating husband from British Columbia recently sued his former lover in order to recoup all the gifts and money he gave her. Mm. Now, the man's wife demanded his mistress return a diamond ring he bought for her. The mistress wrote his wife a check for $800 before canceling it. The cheating husband then sued his mistress and told the court that the money he gave her to buy a diamond ring was a loan. You know, you know the court disagreed and said it was a gift and that the mistress was not financially liable. That's funny. I like that. You know, again, uh, but I'd like to say the title says it all. Cheating hubby sues former mistress for gifts he gave her. That's great. Cultural differences. Not going to happen. Somebody's going to end up dead in my neighborhood with that. (laughs) See? And it's probably going to be the cheating husband. (laughs) No. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's see what let's see what new damage is going on in the food industry. Uh, Starbucks. They're adding a pumpkin birthday cake latte. It's back. <laughs> Have you tried the new McRib yet? No, I won't put that grizzle burger in my sandwich. No. Oh, that's right. Those, that's right. You, you listen to two weeks ago, and you'll find out the history of Big Rib. <laughs> ba ba ba! It's back. <laughs> okay, let's see here. We're they never going We are never ever gonna get McDonald's as a sponsor. No, that's okay. It's like it makes it so much more fun to poke fun at them. Uh, <laughs> go, go ahead. All right. Um, <clears throat> the Whew. the. Uh, you know, I consider myself a wordsmith. I, I have a large vocabulary, and I'm proud of that. But some things. All right, here we go. The Oxford English Dictionary has added the following new words and phrases for 2020. Buck naked. What is it? Buck naked. Buck naked? Yep, buck naked. That's, that's, that. <laughs> yeah, that's when you see the deer in the woods and he run away from you. He buck naked. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, chillax. Chillax. When you, yeah. when you, <laughs> when you need that special something, when you're sitting down, use new hey. creamy chillax. 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 Ooh, soothes the burn. Okay. That's, it used to be called Sominix. Okay. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> um, what other words have been added? Chomper. Chomper. That's, uh, that's where you get like a, uh, you get like a uh, like a three wheeler, you know, with the no, bike thing there. But you get the extended one, but got the big tires in the back. That's a chomper. No, it's the cartoon dog. Meep meep. 
Yeah, it's like, hey, Chomper. Yeah, Chomper, you got him, Chomper. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Easy breezy. Easy breezy. That's that's where, like, it, uh, it's outside, you know, and you, you're that's enjoying the summertime, you know, and the wind comes by, and it's uh, nice, and, breeze, nice and happy. It's, it's, you ain't going to hear no black people saying, easy breezy. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Uh, Jedi. Jedi. That's where, like, you 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 going from California to, to New York, and you're really tired, and your eyes are all Jedi red over. They, they, they's Jedi. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay. Now I got to feel like the most interesting man in the world, the guy who does the Don Seco's commercials. Mm -hmm. All right. Promposal. I Prom don't know that is. I think I know it. I mean, it explains what it is right there. Are it's that whole thing you just talked prom? about. I'm going to love you forever and ever. We're going to we're gonna live in my mom's basement and we're going to be so happy together. And we'll play Nintendo till 2 in the morning. And then I'll get, I'll get a job at McDonald's. And after I get my job at McDonald's, I'll get a new corporate position. And we'll be in love, heaven, forever and ever. So will you please marry me, Mary Jane? Oh my God! Okay, that's, that's a prom and the last word that I see that I, I even want to talk about is slam dunk. Slam dunk. All right, that I tell you, it's, you know, whatever happened to words like loquacious, <laughs> exponential? No, we no, just keep we just doing dunk. these are just compound words. You realize that? Yeah, I know. It's like they're just lazy words, is what they are. Hey, there's a new time. Lazy wings. Lazy, lazy words. words. Okay, let's lazy see. One, lazy words. Uh, what else have I got going on here? Uh, let's see. I've talked about that. The mistress. Uh -huh. is, uh, uh -huh. uh, believe it or not, I'm. I think I'm. I'm almost out of material. For well, you. I'm not because I want to talk about the earthquake that's coming to California. Not a moment too soon. Now, apparently, back in June or July, they're listening to the San Andreas Fault, and the San Andreas Fault is talking. Coming soon <laughs> to a theater near you, California, the drift off. <laughs> you know, We've been waiting for this since the 60s. Come on now. The great island of California will be forming in 2020, apparently. <laughs> They're waiting for like an eight point something on the Richter on this one. Uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a rough one. Um, when California falls, it's gonna fall hard, and it is like one of the top ten countries, if you will, if you had to like list it somewhere, <laughs> and it's gonna go away. Um, also, the the trailer. Not even the the just the trailer for the rise of Skywalker is coming out. Did you hear about this? No. People are getting excited about this, and I'm going, <laughs> what? It's like, <laughs> you know, the next thing we're gonna have is coming soon to a theater near you. The pudding. What? No, 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 no. Put that in pause. Put that in pause. Put that in pause. All right, <clears throat> here we go. Here, shh, 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 here we go. Coming soon to a theater near you, the assembly of R two D two. R two D C three PO, the creation. <laughs> a Mark Goodson, Bill Tomlin production. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting, Man, I was getting all excited about California falling into the ocean. Yeah, it's going to be great. They're getting so it, it's getting to the point where all they're doing is they're making up stuff based upon the Star Wars stories. You know, it's like <laughs> they're going back to like, you know, like the diaper days and, uh, you know, the rise of Skywalker. Uh, 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 we saw what was the movie uh, two years ago? With, um uh, 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 who, who's the guy with the Millennium Falcon? Uh, 
Come on. Uh, 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 oh, uh, 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 oh what the anyway, heck? so they did the, and someone's sitting there, and someone's oh, screaming oh. at the radio going, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <laughs> this is what happens when you show up unprepared. Yes, but, uh, yeah, there, it, it's getting to the point where Disney's just going to be kicking out story after story after story because, first off, because they millions of dollars at they it. Come can, on, they can. Like uh oh. Well, there's the music. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. What? Wait a minute. I wasn't done playing, man. Oh, well, uh, sorry. Hello? Well, no more copyrights. Uh, I only no, want to get one notice. Hit on this now. I'm gonna over. I'm gonna overstep. I'm say good. Uh, say goodbye, Mr. Goodbye, Slade. Everybody. I certainly hope you have a good, wonderful week, and uh, and remember that we love you, and God does too. About that. Hi, I'm JD Slade. I'm Dan Mason, and this is the Slade and Mason Show. Oh. Where does the time go, Dan? It goes right down the toilet. <laughs> You just got to flush twice. You're a grand old bird, black. Hop on a bag and forever in peace pay you way. And to the lovely state of California, we say aloha oi. Or na 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 na. Hey, 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 goodbye. <laughs> Here you go. Why does it sound like it's... I'm Jewish. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, say, well, say goodbye, Mr. Slade. Oh, do I have to now? It's like I'm ready to do another show. Come on, let's yep. just start again. Here we start go. Start again. I'm going to hit bye, this bye, bye, button. Bye, bye, bye. I'm going to hit the stop button. 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 All right. Goodbye, everybody. See you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.